Thank you, Chair. I'm pleased to present Epilepsy Ireland's audit financial statements for the year 31st December 2020. The accounts have been audited by Deloitte and were approved by the Epilepsy Ireland Board in May. All members have received a copy of the accounts and they are published on our website, epilepsy.ie, along with a plain English summary of how we raise and use our funds. The financial statements are prepared in accordance with the statement that recommend the practice for charities known as SORP and FRS 102, the best practice accounting standard and financial reporting for charities. From a financial perspective, the biggest challenge faced by the organization in 2020 was the uncertainty and upheaval caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. The pandemic um, seriously affected our income generating capacity. In particular, our fundraising activities and income from training services. It also highlighted again, our reliance on the HSE and other state funding to deliver our core services. By fundraising and other income fell by 50% in 2020, we were very grateful for a vital grant of 258,000 from the COVID-19 Stability Fund for Community and Voluntary Organizations, which helped to offset the impact of our lost income. This was a fund set up by the Department of Rural and Community Development to help charities like Epilepsy Ireland through the worst of the pandemic. We are also grateful that the HSC committed to continuing their funding as normal since the start of the pandemic. Our stability funding was confirmed in October 2020, but by which time the board and management had taken several decisions to reduce costs, such as leaving a number of staff vacancies open, agreeing temporary salary reductions with management personnel, and postponing certain non-critical planned expenditure. Expenditure also decreased as a result of moving many of our services online for most of the year. All of these circumstances have meant that we are presenting a very different set of audit accounts to that which we had envisaged at the start of 2020. Overall for the year, we reported a surplus of 138,000 compared to a 7,000 surplus the previous year. While this might sound like a very successful year financially, it must be noted that we carried restricted reserves into 2021 of over 200,000. This amount is three times higher than the previous year. The figure represents grants such as stability funding that have been received for specific purposes, but which were not spent by the end of the year. The expenditure would be incurred in 2021, which will see a rebalancing of the financial picture over time. So in simple terms, we got the income and recognized it in 2020, but we're going to be actually spending it in 2021. Despite this 2020 surplus, the fact remains that for the five years prior to 2020, the organization has recorded a combined deficit of almost 300,000. Total income in 2020 was 1.96 million, an increase of 226,000 the previous year. However, this figure includes an in-kind amount of 249,000, which represents a donated service from Havis Media Group. This was the value of a pro bono advertising campaign for International Epilepsy Day 2020, and has included our accounts in accordance with the SORP accounting principles. In simple terms, this is the main reason why our income increased in 2020. As I mentioned previously, the important source of income, the most important source of income is the HSC service level agreements, which amounted to 755,000 in 2020. This section 39 funding is restricted for the provision of our support and information services. And like other section 39 organizations, the amount has remained static for a decade. During that time, the cost of providing the HSC contracted services has been far greater than the funding received and in 2020, 69,000 of fundraised income was used to cover HSE funding shortfalls. In recent years, we have managed to reduce this HSE deficit from over 175,000 at one point to its current amount thanks to new grants such as SSNO and the Sloan to Care Integration Fund, as well as by ensuring tight cost control. But this is very positive. We were hopeful that the HSE's dialogue, dialogue forum with voluntary organizations Will ultimately lead to a review of all funding arrangements across the sector. Excuse me. Monetary fundraising income for the year was 297,000, which was down from 595,000 the previous year. Community fundraising activities critical to Epilepsy Ireland were particularly badly hit in 2020. Activities like church gate collections, rosary, 
Purple Day and supporter led events were all either cancelled or moved online. Other activities continued with relatively little disruption, including the time for a break monthly draw and the members raffle. Other fundraising challenges experienced growth, for example, social media fundraising and donations, which have quickly become our new most important sources of fundraising income. Income also includes our training program on epilepsy awareness and the administration of Bukha Midaslam. In 2020, income fell from 179,000 to 93,000 as the courses were delivered online at a lower fee. Finally and critically, it also included 258,000 received through the COVID Stability Fund for Charities, which helped to offset the drop of fundraising income. Total expenditure in 2020 was 1.82 million, a slight increase from 1.73 in 2019. Under SORP expenditure is reported in terms of charitable activities and raising funds. Almost 1.6 million of expenditure relates to charitable activities, which includes all our work in service provision, training and education, research funding, advocacy and awareness raising. This is an increase of 200,000 from 2019 and is mainly as a result of the 249,000 non-cash donation relating to International Epilepsy Day. The cost of providing support services fell by almost 50,000 from the previous year and training costs fell by 83,000, mainly because of the move to online working. Epilepsy research expenditure increased slightly from 70,000 to 88,000 with two new funds uh, two new projects funded. Fundraising costs, which includes associated staff costs, fell significantly from 329,000 to 223,000. This is because of the reduced fundraising activity for most of the year, and also because the fundraising manager position was vacant from March 2020 until early this year. The nature of our work, providing personalized support services to people with epilepsy and their families, means the staff costs are our biggest single area of expenditure. On average, we had 25 employees in 2020, a decrease of two from the previous year. 17 staff are engaged in service delivery and training, and this was unchanged from 2019. In 2020, payroll costs fell by 155,000 to 940,000 due to vacancies and temporary reductions in management salaries. There are more details of employees in note 12 of the financial statements, including our disclosure of salary greater than 60,000. To summarize our expenditure, of every one euro we spend in 2020, 88 cents went directly, went to direct charitable objectives, which consists of information and support, 36 cents, training and education, 17 cents, awareness raising, 24 cents, Advocacy, six cents, and epilepsy research, five cents. 12 cent of every euro was spent on fundraising. It is our belief that we extract maximum value from every euro that we spend, and you can find more information on this in the use of funds statement on our website. In terms of the balance sheet, the most significant changes include a slight increase in our cash position of 25,000 and an increase in reserves due to our surplus for the year. However, as noted earlier, there are over 200,000 of the restricted funds held at year end to be used from 2021 onwards. During the year, some changes were made to our designated reserves, including replenishing our awareness campaign reserve in order to fund future work in this area and the creation of a new reserve for our anticipated AIDS and appliance project. Overall, Epilepsy Ireland has a strong balance sheet, and this is something that the board, the finance and audit subcommittee, and the management are committed to preserving. Given the challenges posed by COVID-19, this has never been more important. Based on how we've responded to the challenges of COVID-19 to date, alongside current forecasts and projections, the board is confident that the charity has adequate resources to operate as normal for the foreseeable future. As a result, our financial statements to continue to be prepared on an ongoing, on a going concern basis of accounting. While the impact of COVID-19 is, is not yet behind us, members can be assured that the board is closely monitoring our financial position, projections and risks. And while a deficit is likely for 2021, current estimates are that it will not be as severe as initially budgeted. However, many challenges exist for the future, not least building a new fundraising infrastructure to successfully operate in the post-cash, post-pandemic world that we now live in. 
If you are in a position to do so, please continue to support our work. Our annual Rose Week, which will again be centered around the online donations appeal this year, is coming up in October, as is our annual members raffle. There are many other ways members can help, even in the current environment. One very popular and much appreciated way is to host a fa Facebook fundraiser for an, occasion, for an occasion like a birthday or to mark events like Rose Week, International, International Epilepsy Day or Purple Day. It is clear to us that even when the pandemic is fully behind us, online, online fundraising will become a far more important aspect of our fundraising mix. Uh, another way to help, which most of us rarely think about, is to leave a legacy to your favorite charity. Remember, Epilepsy Ireland in your will is an act of great kindness that will make a real difference to the lives of future generations. And with my, and with my legacy month coming up in November, now is a great time to act. I know that our fundraising team would love to hear from members on any fundraising ideas. And if you'd like to volunteer for any of the more traditional forms of fundraising that we hope to restart in the coming months, we'd appreciate it. I want to thank everybody who supported Epilepsy Ireland in 2020. The work outlined by the chair earlier would not have been possible without your support. And we are very grateful for all the contributions, large or small. I want to thank Peter and the management team for their work in guiding the charity through the most difficult 18 months. The volunteer members of our finance and audit subcommittee for their sound oversight. And my fellow board members for their leadership throughout this unprecedented period. Finally, I would like to thank our auditors, Deloitte, who continue to provide a professional and comprehensive service, which is a great reassurance to our members, donors, and the wider public. I'd now like to present the 2020 financial statements at the meeting to the meeting and invite any questions that our members may have. Thank you. <laughs>